thank you to Cloaked for sponsoring this video. When I saw the new Barbie movie that came out recently, which I really recommend seeing, I cried four different times. It got me thinking about the power to be anything you want to be. The new movie and Barbie as a brand have these ideals about independence and empowerment, with characters that can be an astronaut or president or someone who just does beach. But while I do think all these exciting careers are cool and all, it's not always as easy to just launch yourself into space as Barbie makes it out to be. Even though that would be really fun. But luckily, for all of us who don't know how space travel works and are too afraid of confrontation to ever president a whole country, there's another way to imagine what it's like to have your dream job. As long as you imagine it in minigame style with low-res graphics and made for a demographic of 6-12 to 12 year olds, then the Imagine series is right for you. The Imagine line of games, if you're unfamiliar, are really the epitome of both be anything you want to be and shoddy shovelware. Released mainly for the DS and Wii and published by Ubisoft, each title is typically centered around a different career, or at least career-like activity, and during its peak in the late 2000s really targeted that girls can do anything and be who you want to be idealism that was especially popular at the time. The Imagine series is definitely not Ubisoft's only endeavor into games in this genre, as they're also the publisher behind the Pets series, which is probably also worth a video of its own at some point. While the Pets games do cover a lot of ground, the Imagine games get even more specific, with at least 46 different titles in total, all of which came out between 2007 and 2013, and 33 of those released just in 2008 and 2009 alone, so clearly Ubisoft was playing the Imagine Shovelware producer title in hardcore mode. And if you want to play Imagine's safe and secure web browsing experience, then look no further than today's sponsor, Cloaked. Have you ever used a fake email when creating an account? I always default to using jeff at jeff.com. Don't ask me why. Or given someone that old rejection hotline number in place of your real phone number? Well, Cloaked is an app that creates its own rejection hotlines and Jeff-centric emails for you. Unique, proxy-based emails, phone numbers, passwords, and more are available to generate and use when you don't want to reveal your real information online. So if you're shopping on your PC, using one of those websites that forces you to create an account, or even browsing a dating app on your phone and you kinda like this person because they seem cool, but not quite cool enough to just give your real phone number away, Cloaked will generate a new ID for each situation and stores them all in your own secure, individual database so you're always protected. So if you're like me and tired of being haunted by newsletters in your inbox that you definitely didn't sign up for, want to avoid spam messages, or otherwise are just looking to protect your digital identity, get your hands on Cloaked. From September 11th to October 3rd, Cloaked goes into closed testing. But from my audience, if you go to cloaked.app slash dreamjelly, you can bypass the waitlist and then use my code dreamjelly for 20% off your first three months. Thank you again to Cloaked for sponsoring this video, and now back to the exciting world of Imagine Games. While most games like this, and honestly, kind of most DS and Wii games as a whole, the aim is typically for quantity over quality, and you really shouldn't set your expectations too high while playing them. But as much as I can say that now that I'm older, when I was a kid, the fact that there were so many varying titles in this series actually made me want them even more. As far as my elementary school brain was concerned, these were THE titles to get your hands on. Maybe it was the sheer vastness of different jobs they promised that drew me in, or the real girls they always used on the cover art that look like they're having the time of their lives in a sterile white void, or even just the promise held in the title itself. Imagine. Imagine being something instead of a nine-year-old eating yogos surrounded by Jonas Brothers posters. As admittedly cool of a life as that was. Whatever it was, those smiling stock photo girlies and the shiny logo above their heads really worked their magic, and I eventually played my first and only Imagine title in 2009, Imagine Boutique Owner. I feel like I might have just picked this one randomly, but between Fruit Snacks and Disney Channel, I did also like to pretend to own a business as a kid. <laughs> like, make up random forms and force my friends to fill them out for fun. And create countless business cards on AmericanGirl.com. We all did that, right? 
So this choice of Imagine game out of all the others seems to check out. Even though I was clearly having fun taking pretend phone calls as a successful businesswoman, I think it was for the best that I finally got a game to fill in that void for me. Mostly. In Imagine Boutique Owner, you play as a girl named Kate that runs her own boutique and sells things like books, candy, and CDs. It's actually kind of more like a gift shop just going by what she sells, but if Kate were a real person, I feel like she'd be really adamant about how it's clearly a boutique. I don't know, just the vibe I get. The gameplay revolves around talking to customers who give a very vague description of what kind of product they want with different specifications, and Kate's whole job is just wandering around the store in cute outfits and picking things that match what they want. There are a few extra mini-games that are added in to spice up the gameplay, like wrapping gifts, checking out customers at the cash register, and eventually making your own products called Kate's Creations that include bouquets, cakes, jewelry, perfumes, and stuffed animals, all of which I feel like probably don't pass any kind of product regulations, like I don't know, FDA requirements maybe, but they're apparently really popular anyway. The pink sauce of the Imagineverse, if you will. Kate's creations were definitely my favorite part of the game for the hands-on aspect, even if they were a little half-baked. <laughs> Get it? And not super in-depth, these mini-games definitely helped complete the concept. There's even a very loose storyline that plays out in between game levels, mostly about how this lady loves stealing stuff under her criminal alias, the Giraffe, and the scandalous partnership between Giraffe Lady and Kate's super evil corporate man competitor. Really riveting stuff. There's a clear theme in all of the Imagine games that they're definitely made for kids, not to mention, again, shelled out pretty fast, so I'm not expecting any high metric of quality here. I will say, though, that as a kid, it was pretty fun for what it was, though not at all a good comparison for working in actual retail, which was a really big disappointment when I did eventually get a customer service job later on. All in all, even if the gameplay is pretty repetitive, the minigames in between and the exciting tale of Giraffe Lady and Alpha Chad Evil Store Owner Man being corporate crooks made for a pretty entertaining experience. If you aren't into customer service or business owning though, fear not, because there are plenty of other career types that the Imagine games have to offer. I grouped all of the games into these general categories just to get a better handle on the sheer amount that exists, and also because as much as I admittedly am a sucker for girly shovelware games, I just cannot handle playing every single title. My brain count is already looking a little low as it is, probably as a result of playing all the Imagine baby games which I did for your enjoyment in this video if you're interested. So excluding the virtual children this time, I'm going to play one or two games from each category and investigate to see if these games will earn the coveted Dream Jelly seal of approval. And it's worth noting that there are also a few Flash games and even an online Imagine virtual world that exist too, but I stuck to just the console games in this video because I'm curious to see if these DS games are actually as good as I imagined them to be when I was younger. And I'm taking you along on this journey with me, so let's step into the world of low resolution virtual employment together. Starting first with cooking games. There are only two in this group, but I just didn't feel like they fit anywhere else, so I lumped them together and played them both. Imagine MasterChef was actually the first Imagine game that was ever released, so I was especially interested to see how the series started off with this one. Though it became pretty clear as I started that this game wasn't entirely original and was already looking like a Cooking Mama clone based on the intro. The first Cooking Mama game for the DS, which I talk about in my Cooking Mama video for all you mama heads out there, sorry I should not have called you that, came out just a little before this Imagine game did, so I guess Ubisoft was feeling a little inspired. I did think it was going to be just a blatant step-by-step -step ripoff, and don't get me wrong, it was still pretty close, but it does have some unique features that set it apart. Probably the biggest thing that makes Imagine MasterChef a bit different from Cooking Mama has to be this really weird storyline that takes place with the main character Lisa. Lisa has a problem where she's promised to cook her dad some homemade meals, but she hasn't learned anything at all, can't cook, and her dad is coming back from Europe soon. Oh no! 
I don't know why the game asked this, like this is the most relatable, non-specific problem for young girls to have. Anyway, Lisa does literally nothing to try and solve her problem except crying about it, relatable, which leads to a sequence of her wishing on a star, the star turning out to be an angel from the moon that makes Lisa's stuffed bunny come to life and gives it magical powers, and then the bunny hires a famous chef to come to Lisa's house and teach her how to cook. I think even the devs were confused by their own storyline. Rachel is the famous chef that comes to teach Lisa how to cook, and this is where it starts to fall into the familiar cooking mama territory, with Rachel replacing mama as a guide and lots of simple task-based minigames that take you through each recipe's cooking process. As much as most of the minigames are pretty much copy and pasted from Cooking Mama, this game does still have some unique features that make it a little more engaging. There's an interactive kitchen area, including a sink to wash your hands before cooking and wash dishes after, a fridge to choose your ingredients from, and a set of tableware options to pick when presenting the food, which I thought was kind of a cute touch. The UI and overall Japanese style of this game were also really cute at points, like this rabbit sponge for washing the dishes, the rainbow colored heart for scoring, and this save screen with these cute little cats and clouds and a rainbow. I love it. All of that along with Lisa being consistently relatable, not unlike an Imagineverse Usagi from Sailor Moon, and of course the strange moon fairy magic bunny storyline that somehow gets even weirder as you progress, I feel like this game, even with the notes taken from Cooking Mama, seems like it can stand on its own. I think I got the gist of it all after just two in-game recipes, though I'm admittedly still curious to see what happens with the strange sentient stuffed animal plotline. With all that in mind, overall, I'd say that this game is Dream Jelly approved. Imagine My Restaurant seems to go in almost the complete opposite direction of Imagine MasterChef. Despite the name, you do not actually own a restaurant, but this guy does. He gives you a very quick intro, makes general French noises, Bonjour. and then just drops you right in the kitchen where the gameplay isn't quite quite as similar to Cooking Mama, and it's a little more freeform and has more of the different steps in the cooking process. This game really does not hold your hand and just lets you figure things out on your own, which I appreciate as an impatient tutorial hating adult playing this, but I feel like I probably would have easily gotten confused and stuck early on because there's too many different things to click on and not a lot of direction and Cooking Mama is nowhere to be found and now I'm overwhelmed. Anyway, I actually had a lot more fun with this one than I thought I would, which is probably because I have a soft spot for simulation games, so aside from that crunchy French voice clip that caught me off guard in the beginning, mm -hmm. does this game get an approval from me? I'd have to say, we. Oui. Boy, all that cooking sure made me hungry. For the spotlight. Next up is the glamour yeah. section. Out of the three in this category, I went with Imagine Movie Star, mostly because there are a lot of different music-themed games and rock star sims out there already, and Movie Star just seemed like something a little more unique. But it turns out that this game was not that unique, and it was, in fact, very bad. I started off with my hopes probably a little too high for an Imagine game, but it seemed like it was going to have a lot of cool features at first. At least, that's what my trustworthy manager was telling me anyway. I designed my movie star exactly in my likeness, which was as glamorous and beautiful and definitely not at all as terrifying as possible. The customization options were a little limited, which I thought was fine, assuming there must be lots of other cool features that needed the memory instead, but there's not. I may as well have just played one of the music games or literally any other rhythm game ever because that's what this whole game is. Your first audition, a date with a quote, Hollywood hunk, clearly, a night out in the clubs, it's all just rhythm games. Rhythm games where your unnaturally long-legged movie star kind of just T-poses on stage, moves in other glamorous poses, and occasionally even kind of animates a little. I searched around for other things to do in the menu, but even though it seems like there's a lot of options, this just took me back to the character customization and an area to rehearse for the rhythm games, which are the exact same as the regular stages, but without the stakes. 
Again, I know I probably set my expectations a little too high for this one, but I just had so much fun cooking with sentient stuffed animals and random Frenchmen that mm -hmm. this game was a huge drop in quality by comparison. And because of that, unfortunately, it gets a no from me, dog. Maybe some time in the spotlight was a bit too big of a leap from being a modest, constantly crying chef. I think I need to humble myself and get back to a more approachable career and delve into some white collar jobs. I chose reporter to play out of this category because it seemed like the most fun and I wanted to avoid the teacher game specifically just to limit my chance of seeing potentially cursed low poly children if I could help it. I just hope this isn't another rhythm game where if I don't get a high enough score I report the wrong news or something and the whole world descends into chaos. That is how journalism works, right? Well, how journalism works in this game is through a series of different themed mini-games, which maybe you've noticed by now is pretty standard for most of these games and shovelware in general. Our daring and fearless reporter Dream Gel, because Dream Jelly wouldn't fit, is out on the scene collecting dialogue bubbles during interviews, taking pictures of the same striking two poses over and over again, hosting radio shows with the correct buttons, and focusing the video camera on every subject for the perfect found footage film every time. To give the game some credit, journalism does seem like a kind of difficult profession to translate into mini-games made for young girls, never mind mini-games that are both fun to play and not overly complicated. So while tapping dialogue bubbles for an interview and taking the same fireman's picture 30 times in a row weren't exactly what I'd call super engaging, they definitely get some points for creativity, and really for being anything more than a rhythm game with T-posing Sally Longlegs over there. I didn't really play very much of Imagine Reporter because, as is seeming to be true for most of these games, once you've played about 10 to 15 minutes of them, you've pretty much seen it all. I'd imagine that there are a few other mini games and features that are unlocked later on, at least I hope so, because even though I played this game for free, I want the illusion of getting my money's worth. But I doubt I really missed out on much, to be honest. For a game that's meant to be about uncovering the truth and reporting on the action, there wasn't a whole lot of action. But again, for what it is, it is at least somewhat decent. So I'd say this game is approved. More tonight at 11. Sticking with the theme of more white collar jobs, I stepped off the news filled streets and back into the world of business. This category had the most games in it, at least according to my arbitrary organizing, and they also vary a lot, so I decided to pick two to play from this list. Starting off with Imagine Wedding Designer, this was another game that I had really high hopes for when I first started it up, but then I quickly remembered, oh yeah, this is an Imagine game, and sometimes they are not what you imagine them to be. You play as a wedding planner and take each bride through all the typical stages of wedding planning like picking invites, outfits, venue, and the genetic makeup of their partner. With all the different steps there seemed to be, I thought things might get more detailed and interesting, but it was, yet again, pretty minimal as far as customization goes. I also went probably a little bit too long without realizing that I was supposed to be paying attention to the bride's reaction to different options as we went along, instead of just picking what I thought was the cutest. I mean, my picks were way better, but fine, we can do it your way, I guess. Despite following her happy and frowny faces along the way, when I could make them out through the pixels, that is, once I finally planned all the details of her wedding, including styling her bedroom for some reason, she still ended up on her wedding day looking like she was considering being a runaway bride. So I'm just gonna blame that on the groom that I genetically engineered like two minutes before her wedding. Definitely wasn't my fault. The wedding otherwise seemed to go pretty well, and I got some pretty great shots of the ceremony to prove it. After this tutorial level, I unlocked a good amount of options, which was good to see because despite all of the different wedding specific buildings in this town to plan with, the gameplay still felt really limited. Each bride only likes one to two options from each planning stage, and while you do get free choice over the colors, it just made for a really basic and boring game. If there was a bit more control over the planning, like choosing items that are meant to fit a certain theme or something, I think this one could have been fun, but as it is now, both me and my bridal client would like to get a divorce from this game. 
On the other end of the Imagine Business game spectrum, though, salon stylist seemed to have most of what Wedding Designer was missing. It started off with a 3D rendered cutscene, of all things, which is honestly the most effort I've seen these games put in so far, even if it was vague, short, and a little uncanny. The gameplay here still wasn't overly detailed or involved, but it did have more simulation involved where you actually wash, cut, and style hair. Each client also requests a certain style that could have multiple options that match what you're looking for, so it felt more hands-on and like you were actually in control instead of just following Mrs. Frowny Face's nonverbal instructions. There were also some extra details for customization like dyeing hair and decorating the salon, and there was even this PDA that didn't actually serve much of a purpose, but the detail that went into all the screens would be the exact kind of thing that I would weirdly obsess over as a kid, so points for that. I liked the small stylization touches that were similar to the PDA too, like this receipt at the end of each style and this ledger full of clients. I appreciate the little details, okay? The gameplay once again got repetitive pretty quickly, but there were different hairstyles unlocked with each level and I think there was an implication that you'd eventually be able to do the client's makeup too, so that could be fun if it is a feature. For having more involved mechanics, little cutscenes to watch, and a hair dye color in Dream Jelly Purple, I'm deeming this game a classic Imagine Series W. And what good are a cool new hairstyle and a sad wedding day without some new friends to share them with? And by new friends, I mean animals. And by animals, I mean the animals section that we are very smoothly segueing into next. As much as all the business owner games seemed to vary a lot, the seven different animal games keep things pretty simple. One is a zookeeper sim, two are strictly about horses, and four of them are about veterinarian work, all with slightly different names. I'll go ahead and say it right here, I'm just not a horse girl, and I never have been, so I think if I played either of the equestrian games, I just wouldn't appreciate them enough. And as far as the zookeeper title goes, I'm going to take a wild guess that even though it's set at the zoo, the gameplay probably won't be that different from the clinic games, so I went with choosing one of the vet options, Animal Doctor Care Center, which I picked mostly because it has more words in the title than the others, starts off with honestly the hardest soundtrack of the game so far, especially when it's initially played over just a language selection screen and many different angles of this tuxedo cat. Look at him go! I named myself Jelly just to spice things up a little and be a little goofy, and then was immediately called Victoria, so we're off to a great start already. Right away, one of my first thoughts was that the animals in this game are actually pretty cute. Working within the limitations of DS games can sometimes just create some awful looking graphics, especially when it comes to people and animals, not to mention babies. But I have to say that for a more realistic looking style, I actually really liked these little guys. The stylization was great in this game too. I don't know if I'm an outlier and just really lame for liking things like this, but I appreciated the way that the laptop and its files were set up, that you choose your tools from a doctor bag, and get your score and results on a little medical clipboard at the end of each level. I'm realizing now, as I'm saying this too, that having aspects of this game that actually fit the theme and subject of the gameplay is kind of just meeting the bare minimum, but as we've seen with some of the other games so far, the bare minimum is not always met, so I'm learning to appreciate it when I can. Why are we still here? After the first few in-game days of treating puppies and kittens, there were more different kinds of animals to treat, and I think the turtle was definitely my favorite out of what I got. Look at his little face! And there were more involved treatments depending on what was wrong with each animal, even going as far as to have you cauterize a wound, which gets some points for realism, I guess, despite all the pixels, because I honestly would have expected a game like this to just slap a band-aid on it and call it a day. There's also a pen for holding sick or unadopted animals, which doesn't go super in-depth with the gameplay, but is something to break up the monotony at least. To be honest, this game kind of feels like a pet care sim, but with a few extra doctory steps, and you know what? I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Washing a smiling little turtle and petting a monkey were probably some of the more exciting things I did today. 
even if they're essentially just exotic Nintendogs. Aside from some of the character dialogue feeling a little off sometimes, I'm guessing because of localization, and that time that I misdiagnosed a puppy that had a fever with a cold when it was actually parasites, because that makes sense. Overall, this game deserves a healthy thumbs up in my medical book. Give me an A, give me a T, give me a... I'm not spelling the rest. But we're moving on to athletics. I don't know if maybe you could have guessed by the fact that I make YouTube videos about DS games, but I'm not exactly the most sporty individual. That being said, I'm excited to get all the exercise I could possibly need through what will hopefully be an exhilarating, high-energy Imagine game. I really had no idea what to choose for this section, mostly because the more Imagine games I play, the more I realize that there is no way to predict how any of these games will play out. So to help manage my declining expectations, I used a random generator to pick which sport was best for me, which is how I assume all of the best athletes do it. And by the power of the wheel, I became officially enrolled in virtual ballet lessons. Even though I was half expecting another lazy rhythm game with eerie 3D models, I think this was the game I was honestly most surprised by. There are multiple characters to play as, each with their own storylines and voice acted dialogue, and from there, the story plays out as an otome style visual novel. This character Kira is really peppy and excitable, which was an added bonus because I mainly picked her just because I thought her hair was cute. I feel like giving the characters more of a personality really would have helped with some of the other games when the actual gameplay felt pretty lacking, but this time around the gameplay was a lot more interesting too. There's a whole overworld map, plenty of mini games that all somehow relate back to skills you'll need for ballet, a shop to buy outfits and accessories from, areas to talk to different characters, and of course, the ballet academy where you practice and learn different moves. While none of the minigames were super involved, there was still so much diversity between them all that it really helped round out the world. This game felt so much more like I was learning new skills as I went and like I was actually living a life as an aspiring dancer instead of just running through the same minigame over and over with slight changes. I tried out all the features I could find and even after that there was still more to do, so this game could really keep you occupied for a while if you wanted to perfect your ballet skills. The different outfits, characters, and UI were all in this cute Japanese style and super engaging in a way that would have made me love this game as a Kid, even though I could barely hula hoop without hurting myself, never mind doing pirouettes. But you don't have to worry about that if you're playing a video game, so for that reason, and of course for all of its content and quality, this game definitely gets two toes up. Like ballet toes and their special, like the pointy shoes that they wear. It's good, I'm saying it's approved. Now that I'm tired out from all of that ballet thing, I think it's time to work my brain muscles next and get creative. My secret world from this category is actually kind of an outlier and isn't much of a game at all, but functions more like a virtual diary and PDA. There are some mini games included in it, but since there isn't a real theme or point to it, I decided to keep all of my secrets in my real diary for now, and instead played Imagine Artist and got imaginative. This game was a lot less like a game in the traditional sense and was more like an instructional hobby assistant if that's a term that exists. It takes you through the basics of DS artistry, from tracing and painting to stencils and collages. And before you say anything, I was using a mouse to draw here, so yeah, I know, it's really good, you don't have to make a big deal out of it. While the game clearly has a vision in mind for what the final product is supposed to look like, it doesn't really penalize you for going outside the lines or choosing your own colors which I really appreciate for something that's meant to teach expression and imagination. If a kid was looking for a fun way to get into creating art, I could see this being a helpful introduction, even if it isn't super detailed, just for the creative freedom that it gives overall. And for that, I think that this game is approved as a decent beginner's artist tool, even if the tutorial lady's soulless eyes are very scary. And sticking with the creative trend, grab your overpriced handbags and experimental shoes because last but not least is the fashion section. 
The career of fashion designer was definitely my top dream job for a while when I was younger, though I'm convinced now that there's not really a job where I could have just drawn pictures of non-existent clothes all day as a child and gotten paid to do it. Though maybe I'm wrong, because it sure looks like someone's kid is working at Balenciaga. I actually had a different fashion designing DS game to try and realize my dream as a kid, but it was no Imagine game, so as far as I was concerned, it was completely inferior. So I'm hoping that this fashion game, an actual Imagine title, will be much better. To once again leave it up to fate, because none of these titles are overly descriptive and I can't decide which one to choose, we return to The Wheel to pick a fashion game for me. And we've ended up with simply Fashion Designer. Go ahead and take a guess before I play on how you think this game will go. Surprise! It was pretty much just like all the others. Who would have guessed? Quantity over quality is definitely a clear theme in nearly all of the Imagine games I played, but it seems to be especially true in this one. There were tons of different stages and features to play through, and I don't even think I got to all of them, but the ones I did play were pretty short and pretty lackluster. Also, for a game that's meant to be about actually designing fashion, there's a lot of minigames surrounding fashion modeling, like photo shoots, runway walks, and hair and makeup. I feel like there probably wasn't a ton of thought put into these games in general, and especially into what they were called, but I do think something like Imagine Supermodel would have matched a little better. Though there is a section for actually designing clothes, the outfits have to match certain criteria to pass, and overall it just isn't very fun. I know, shocking. Even though this game had the coveted Imagine title tied to it, it definitely didn't beat the other fashion shovelware game I played as a kid, so it just goes to show you that branding isn't always everything. And with that in mind, the game I probably would have begged to have as a kid sadly does not pass the adult Dream Jelly's quality test. Imagine that. <laughs> Despite all being developed by different teams, it's wild to me that the quality throughout almost every Imagine game I've played has been consistent. Not exactly in the same ways, because some were definitely better or more creative than others, but generally speaking, almost every Imagine game has the same level of just very mid gameplay, boring mechanics, and usually even worse graphics. And I'll be the first to say that poor graphics are totally excusable if the game makes them worth it, but uh, that was not the case here, so I have to come to the unfortunate ultimate conclusion that for the majority of these games, I would have been better off just continuing to imagine them in my head. I do have to give some real credit to the games that weren't super terrible though, especially Ballet Star. If that was the only Imagine game you played, you'd probably think that the whole series was really fun and creative and engaging. But if you had only played Movie Star, you might have just thrown your DS away instead. Let me know if you played any of these or a different Imagine game that I didn't get to. I'd love to hear all of the wildly different experiences we've all had between them. Knowing what I know now, I'm realizing I somehow got lucky with owning Boutique Owner when I was younger, because as much as that game isn't the pinnacle of quality or anything, compared to some of its other Imagine counterparts, it really wasn't that bad. Overall, I think I've learned a few things in my Imagine exploration. One, that shovelware is always going to be shovelware and you really shouldn't expect too much out of it, especially since sometimes in lowering your expectations you could get surprised when the game is actually kinda good. Two, that Imagine games were officially not all that I imagined them to be when I was a kid, and I'm glad to finally be able to put that restless childhood thought of mine to rest. <laughs> And three, that if you have dreams of your own, sometimes it's good to close the video games, put down the Nintendo DS, and get out there and achieve your goals on your own. Or you could just sit around and cry about it until an ethereal moon being sprinkles some magic dust on all of your stuff and fixes everything for you. Whichever works. Hi! Welcome to Jelly TV. I wanted to start this little segment where I share a video I've watched recently that I just thought was really cool and give it a little shout out. I love finding fun and engaging content out there in the wilds of YouTube, so this is a dedication to all the great content creators out there that I hope continue to make more cool stuff. 
This time, the video is The Pet Game Craze of the 2000s by Strawberry Sprite. This topic is right up my alley. I love creature care games, and Strawberry Sprite just summed up this genre perfectly. I love all of the little edits and sound effects and just the overall aesthetic of the channel and the vibe that the video gives off, so I really recommend checking out this video and the rest of their stuff. A huge thank you to Daniel E from ABQ, Joe Cheeseman, Kevin Evans, Brett Morgan, Bunzo, Findicano and Irise, Hayden Campbell, Johan Aik, Lily Puff, Lucy Likes Tegan and Sarah, Mark Kent, M. Wee, Oliver E, Paper Sam, Pixel Puppy, Sarah, Shaples, Starbit Illustrations, Steely Dan Rather, Theodore Nicolaelius, and the rest of my patrons for supporting me. I hope it's okay, I've listed all of you as references on my Imagine Games resume, just to give me some credibility. Please tell anyone who calls that I'm a great employee, know my way around a DS stylus, and definitely never cry on the job.